everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of the internet's most hated mafia-themed geek podcast, the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, the show's main host and frontman. And yes, I am flying solo this week once again, uh, as usual. But that's beside the point. I just wanted to share some stuff with you, a couple of reviews from about video games, uh, a show review that we, uh, it's been kind of wild that we got to talk about, and, and, uh, some coverage, uh, kind of a local show coverage. Uh, let's start with that, uh, real quick, and, uh, the reason why we're starting with kind of a, a show coverage, it's, uh, yes, it's a craft show, uh, I'm not really into craft shows, but as we stated many times, not just on this show, but to many other people, that we are more than willing to, um, uh, cover, something that is someone else's geek. We are a multilateral geek podcast, which means if someone wants to talk to us about something, uh, we are more than willing to do so. And that being said, uh, we've had over the past, uh, I want to say close to, if not more than a year, a, a very good relationship with those who are running the Martinsburg Roundhouse in West, here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Uh, they're, they're very nice people. They want, they they're trying to dig themselves out of a very um, nasty reputation I think the, the Roundhouse had before they took it over. Uh, so when we came into the picture, they kind of um, welcomed us or us being a very small indie podcast to come help uh, do coverage of some shows and all that. They thought it was a, a, a very great partnership to have and something I don't mind. And this past, uh, I won't say this past week, uh, when we saw them, or I should say, when I saw them, uh, they kindly asked, you know, hey, would you mind covering uh, the the craft show um, that is that we're having on the the oh, there's the train uh, on the 14th and 15th? And I figured, you know, uh, is if you don't mind, I'll show up one of the days, you know, and, and I'll see what I can do. And they said, sure, come on, sh you know, we want you to come. We want you to do what you do best. And that's what I did. I um, We do have a walkthrough video of that craft sh uh, show. I think it call was called On the Craft Train 2. Um, and it was a very decent event. I think they were promote, uh, saying that it had close to a uh, 100 or so vendors, but um, if, I don't think it had that many, but still, it had a, quite a number uh, of vendors, more than I expected. Uh, this on the day that I went, it seemed like there was a very decent turnout. Uh, not just vendor-wise, but people-wise, looking around, uh, looking around, enjoying everything, which is very good, uh, very good to see. Uh, check out the video; it's on our Facebook page. It, it our Facebook page, as always, is facebook.com forward slash the Long Coat Mafia podcast, and on our YouTube channel. Uh, just head on over to YouTube, search the Long Coat Mafia podcast, and it will be there. And um, yes, I know it's a long video, but stick with it. It just shows all the video and does. We it's pretty much uh, us doing what we do best, and that's bringing an event to you who can't make it. And the way kind of uh, we were told, the local paper kind of screwed things up a little bit and tried to make things right, which was not necessarily the best thing from what we heard. Um, but that's the paper's paper's fault. Um, and but still, they uh, we got that we got at least one interview from one of the authors that are that was there and what i'm going to do is step back a little bit and kind of give you one of uh, uh that interview that we got from a, one of the local authors that are, has been in the area hello everyone we are here at the uh crafting at the roundhouse uh the craft chain at the roundhouse if uh, i'll i'll pause this for a quick come on in come on come on in sir more than welcome. Oh, he's your friend. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know. Um, I am here with Bo Bolliard. So um, Bo is one of the many authors here on uh, at this event, and he's selling two of his books here at this event. Uh, what are the books? 
the, my first book is A Window into the Past, The Forgotten History and Secrets of Harpers Ferry, Jefferson County, and the Mountain. My second book is My Spectacular Home, Harpers Ferry, Jefferson County, West Virginia. The second book is Unauthored Ghost Stories that I collected. The first book is just exactly what the title says. Uh, if I may. You may. Um, it is, um, just give us, uh, uh, if you may, sir, um, give us a rundown in regards to um, a window into the past. It, you said it's uh, the forgotten history and secrets of his, um, of Harper's Ferry. Uh, what can we find in, in the book? You will find a few recipes from local restaurants that are no longer in existence. You will find the life I grew up with in town that is no longer in existence with pictures along with it. Now, uh, folks, I want to say this. We'll, we'll give contact information where to find these books. They are, um, I'm not knocking the gentleman here in regards to what he's putting out, but they are very uh, brief books. They're uh, maybe about 20, 30 pages long, if not a little bit more, but there's, I'm sure they're crammed with content. Uh, and history, like the one book is the Forgotten History, and getting more than just the history of Harper's Ferry, you're getting recipes and everything else um, from his perspective. A taste of my life. A taste of his life. And what I grew up with. So it's not um, boiled down or anything like that? It's, it's from not boiled down. It, I, I hold nothing back. I tell, I tell facts about my life and my family. I didn't sugarcoat anything. I didn't sugarcoat anything concerning the park service and what they <laughs> pulled. In book two, I just told told the stories as the ghost stories as they were told to me. I tied local history to the story or the area where it takes place. So the, the ghost stories, the spooky tales, are um, were originally passed down to you as spoken tales, or they, they were verbal stories told to me by friends and neighbors that had happened in their homes, their properties, and to them. So, um, I hate to repeat myself like that. So, it's like ghost tales, like I've seen this figure walk by, I've seen that sort of thing, or it's just general, uh, like, campfire stories. It's more campfire stories. People who have read both books have referred to me, after reading them, as the John Boy Walton of Jefferson County. That's a big title to live up to. So, um, again, it's another book that's maybe about 30, uh, 30 to 40 pages long. Uh, again, folks, we're not knocking this at all. Uh, books like this is, has, it's always great that a person like this gentleman here is putting out. Uh, he's putting out work, and they are... What is usually the cost of one of these books? Like, Since I had to get a business license, if you're buying a single copy, they are $10.70. If you buy the set of them, they are $16. Folks, for something like this, it's not a bad price um, for that. And um, the state has to get there. <laughs> <laughs> As always, um, you told me... Um, that these books are not necessarily, these are purely independent books. Uh, you can't find these on Amazon, but uh, where can can you find these? I'll, I'll help you guys and gals out there by uh, either before this interview or after the interview, telling you where you can find them and giving you the, the addresses where to uh, find these books that this gentleman is selling them. If you are interested in picking up a copy yourself, and where can they find these books? They can purchase them at Black Dog Coffee in Carneysville and O'Hurley's General Store in Shepherdstown carries them. 
or they can contact me directly at 156 Thumper Drive. Uh, right I'm going to have to cut you off like that because a lot of where we have the show posted and it gets fed to, they get a little bit finicky about personal information being released. So I, I try to do that. I'll have folks contact Black Dog Coffee in regards to the book. Okay. Uh, I, it's just uh, they don't. It's to minimize people being rude to you, sir. So I get rude mail all the time. Uh, you, I also get mail that's the opposite. So if that be the case, YouTube, Facebook, and anywhere else you hear this, you heard that's here first. Then that be the case. Go ahead. Everyone's entitled to their opinion of my writing and what I wrote. They can contact me at 156 Thumper Drive, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438, and care of books. Well, you heard that, folks, here. Uh, just send, like, maybe a little bit of a, a one-page uh, note saying which book you're interested in, and uh, he'll be more than happy to send you the book uh, with uh, after, tax, after, tax payment. After, <laughs> after payment. Um Matter of fact, put which book down you want, uh, My Spooky Home or um, A Window into the Past with uh, probably, uh, if you want, folks, add a couple of bucks to the, the cost for, posting. for posters $4 back. For posting. How much? $4. $4 dollars for, dollars for posters. posters. Remember, it's 10 bucks a book, so plus tax. You can get the set for $16.05. $16 every copy that's mailed out is signed. They will be signed, folks. Um, you get a signed copy for ten bucks to uh, actually ten seventy with tax. So the go single copy. for a single copy, sixteen oh five for both books, which is not bad price, folks. And both will be signed for you. You heard the contact information. YouTube, he gave permission to that information to be released. So uh, I do thank uh, the gentleman for their interview. Thank you. So stay tuned for our relevant content. Welcome back, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed that interview from Bo. We thank him so much for allowing us to do this. Links to uh, Elise Black Dog Coffee, if you want to pick up the book that way, will be in the description down below. And I would also like to thank the folks behind the Martinsburg Roundhouse for allowing us to kind of do what we do best, and that is cover the this event. And hopefully we will cover this event again next year to see if it grew or shrunk uh if they allow us to do that and uh from what we heard n early next year there will be uh, a paracon again so um with that now uh, there was some kind of controversy i won't say controversy with the aspect of the video that we did for the martinsburg roundhouse and it has nothing to do with the folks that run the martinsburg roundhouse and that being um Last night on our YouTube channel, we did upload a couple of videos for all of you to watch. Uh, one of which was the kind of the intro cinematic for uh, Borderlands 3, which we'll get to in a moment. And because there is a song attached to that uh, opening c cinematic, we were copyright claimed. We did not issue a copyright strike, but we were issued a copyright claim because it's part of a uh, uh, music video it wasn't uh, we couldn't really do fair use but since I was able to leave it up and uh, have Facebook mute that two minute section uh, that's what I allowed uh, f YouTube to do and uh, the claim was removed so uh, after that little bit fiasco and a little bit of aspect because there are a lot of youtubers out there that do Borderlands coverage they're allowed to pretty much have anything that they want on their ta channel in regards to this, and they don't get claimed whatsoever. But someone our size with a measly 22 subscribers, we get claimed every single dang time. Now, that being said, we put up a walkthrough of uh, Crafting on the Train or Craft on the Train 2 uh, up on our YouTube channel first. And what happens? We get, as soon as it was uploaded, well, if you guess copyright claimed again, we got copyright claimed. Because in the background, uh, this is uh, nothing against the folks of uh, 
uh, who put on the event, those to the roundhouse and everything else, they had a, uh, someone there playing music. And because of this music in the background, when we were talking, telling about the vendors, what they're selling, and how it's beneficial and how you should be uh, supporting them, apparently the, the music was loud enough to be heard and BMG Music decided we got to copyright claim two minutes of our song that probably no one heard in their life had uh, or very few people heard in their life and we got to copyright claim it because we got to earn video on a, on a video that might be only be seen by 10 people. Yeah, we got to copyright claim it so we can earn money on the 10 people who saw it. Yeah, we, we want to earn a whole freaking dollar uh, if that off the 10 people or a, a half a penny over the 10, 20 people that might see this video over the next 10 years. So uh, we did, we did, um, we sent out a, a challenge to it saying that it was in essence fair use because we were talking over it. Therefore, the music is cha uh, has been changed and this is background music. Now, YouTube was supposed to um, kind of uh, go around this and say you, you're not supposed to be doing this and supposed to kind of uh, limit the bots from doing stuff like this because they understand videos that are, are, are put up uh, can be made in cars and there are other cars on the road that uh, could be playing music and there's nothing that anybody can do and that's what we kind of said we, we, we're talking over the music we're we're not featuring our music this is not um, like the Borderlands 3 video that we put up that yeah we understand the fact that um, that it's part a main part of the video we're not um, uh, changing it in any way shape or form to the fact that uh, we're talking over it it's gameplay uh, we're not uh, doing anything of that sort but with this walkthrough yes it is you know can be con probably considered fair use because we're talking over it we're talking about the the uh, the stuff that's on the person's table and the why you should be buying from them and yes we'll be uh, if we have to take the video down we'll take the video down hatefully but uh, we'll do it that's why we tell a lot of you folks out there to subscribe to our Facebook ta uh, page, uh, which is facebook.com forward slash The Long Coat Mafia Podcast, as well as our YouTube channel, because this stuff is happening more and more often on YouTube, and it's pissing off a lot of the small creators like myself, because we don't have the protection of a uh, multi-channel network, a MCN, uh, to protect us, we're, we're, we don't have three million subscribers. We don't have, you know, even a half million subscribers to um, say, "Hey, we're a decent-sized channel. Leave us alone. We're doing this." Everybody's been pissed off about this too. I think a lot, you had a uh, uh, Angry Joe. You've had a lot of other uh, larger YouTubers getting pissed off that. They try to do uh, reactions that they talk over it. They they can't do it. You had uh, you'll have folks that uh, uh, I think like Mechorandom forty two. She said that she can't she can't review anything that's on CBS because the fact that or anything from Warner Brothers because they constantly claim the stuff that is on her channel that she tries to review due to the simple fact that. It might be a negative review. It, it just pisses me off. Um, because like with this, I have it on YouTube, like this walkthrough on YouTube, because it, it, there's a chance of a wider reach for everybody out there. Uh, and these folks constantly putting up the, the, uh, the, these claims and doing these claims, whether manual or automatic, uh, it, it's hurting us. It's hurting creators, and right now there is no com reasonable competition that is out there that I can go to and start posting up because it's it's no reach. Uh, some people have said, "Why don't you go to like Daily Motion?" Uh, I've seen Daily Motion. There, um, I could go there for a video, 
and half the time because it's so iffy that video won't play and it's very hard but uh, I need to continue this I just wanted to let you guys know um, what before we get into Borderlands 3 uh, it's going to be a, a chunk of, of an interview but uh, um, we'll work on the video game stuff right now uh, I just want to briefly talk about um, gear uh, not just uh, you heard like two weeks ago, me and Big Candy talk about the gambling aspect in uh, NBA 2K20. And the thing is, it, it dropped, I think, this week or a few days ago. And it is broken. Broken to hell. So broken that the folks that were, behind, in essence, behind the videos, like the video I saw in regards to... Um, the gambling aspect that featured the, the slot machine, the pachinko, the roulette wheel, uh, those folks were pretty much saying, this is not the game uh, we played, that we we had privy to. So, there was uh, like threads and uh, even 2K, uh, the folks that put out the game were like, oh well, what you gonna do? You gotta have to do this. But um, it's not the only broken game out there. Borderlands 3 is broken. Again, we'll get into that. But I want to touch on um, uh, Gears of War 5. Uh, I, I managed to convert um, my Xbox Live Gold into the Ultimate uh, tier, which is the Gold and the Game Pass account, uh, which... Uh, enables me to have access to game the Game Pass games, and thus allowing me to have Gears of War 5 several days in advance than the release, and at for, which also entitled me to have I think uh, two Gears of uh, two Halo Reach characters and the Terminator uh, Dark Fate characters, which it was. Uh, uh, Sarah Connor and the T-800, I think it was. Um, and when I initially was exploring the game and everything else, I wasn't seeing uh, the, the Terminator set. But I was seeing the Halo Reach set. And when I kind of reread the news and what's going on with the game, why I'm not having it, um, or having this, the block, I felt that you had... Um, I was informed the fact that You'll get it uh, soon, really soon, that it is coming, you have that ability, or it's going to be given to you. Don't worry about that. And about two days later, three days later, it did show up and for the game. But all in all, the gameplay is great. Uh, I like it so far. I haven't played too much of it. There are some frustrating sections in it, or, or at least one section. They have um, this... this um, character this enemy that you fight core called the warden and the only way you could defeat this this uh mini boss if you will is to kind of shoot the helmet off its head and continually use headshots now me and matt i were playing co-op with this game we got to this section and after like uh, two or three tries, we beat this this mini boss, if you will, and we moved on to the next section with no problem. And as soon as uh, we moved to the next section, we got swamped with the horde or whatever uh, the enemy is called. Um, and both of us go down, and we have to, in essence, restart from the checkpoint. This is the first annoyance of the game that we came to I, I haven't played it past this point yet I gotta go back to it uh, probably after I get sick and tired of Borderlands 3 but um, this section it put us back again right at this mini boss before we fought the mini boss this why there wasn't a checkpoint immediately after this mini boss is beyond me uh, just uh, uh, it just pissed me off. It's like I I don't want to play this anymore. If I uh, get swarmed, and that's what seemed to happen a lot in this game, is that the enemy or the mini boss, if you're playing co-op or by yourself, it would swarm either you or the fr your friend that's playing that you could not reach that have the AI come to you to help pick you up and resurrect you, or you can't get to your friend 
uh, to uh, resurrect them because the swarm was just uh, covering them, uh, just sticking right by them, not allowing you to do that, and one hit taking you down. And when you have to play this one section and this frustrating boss five, six, eight times just to get by it, yeah, you're going to turn off, it's going to um, piss off a lot of casual players. Yeah, I'm sure you can adjust it for easy mode, but to get a better play experience, you have to pay, play it on at least normal or intermediate mode. And it, it just, I have to go back to it. I got to try it. Maybe we could get a few extra people to um, to help us and, you know, work on it or at least play the, their uh, their mode uh, together as a group for this. But I think it's kind of hard to play because, not the horde, uh, they call it like a horde mode. It's just that you have four or five players going against just a bunch of enemies coming in. Um, but just to do that, just to have some fun, like the old days like what we used to do with Halo Reach and um, uh, some of the other games similar to that. So, uh, we'll, I'll, eventually I'll get back to uh, Gears of War 5 and uh, I'll give you a much better review of how things turned out. I will say this, uh, when the story was moving along fine, I did enjoy it. There was a story. I a lot of I was not bored with it because we had one person... Um, when we were talking about the the gambling with uh, NBA 2K, again, this was a diehard NBA 2K player. That's all this person ever plays is NBA 2K, uh, and he kind of fiddled. He his best insult for the me in the show was, "You guys at the show probably just play Fortnite all day long." Again, coming from someone who plays NBA 2K all day long. And I told him, we don't play kid games like that. We play games with story, like Borderlands, Gears of War, Assassin's Creed. And I rattle off a bunch of titles with, you know, stories, including, I think I even mentioned Halo. And his reply was, those stories are very boring. Why would you play such, again, a boring game like basketball. Okay. We're going to dribble a ball up and down a court and shoot a hoop. Uh, something I can do in real life. Granted, basketball in real life is a, can be a very strategic game. I am not denying that in any way, shape, or form. But you're playing a video simulation of something you can do yourself in the real world. I cannot shoot alien creatures in the real world i can uh or i can't you know travel to pandora or i can't uh fight underground creatures uh like i can in gears of war i can't uh travel back to the middle ages and be this assassin assassin like character i can't fight aliens i can't you know do that these are stories that are there these are not boring um games anyway shape or form and they do take some games like um gears of war or uh especially when you play a horde mode uh are st strategic um sometimes the game actually the uh storyline can be strategic as well because um there is a wider world you, you could flank enemies and so forth and so on on this especially if there's different guns to use uh, so, there's that. Now, let's get into uh, Borderlands 3. The release was this Friday the 13th. Um, I did get it, get to play it a few hours early on the 12th, thanks to a, uh, a tip from a friend of mine on my Xbox Live list that told me to uh, easily change my console location to New Zealand and then restart the system then you'd be able to play so that's what i did i'm i'm you know testing it and it's like i didn't think this little itty bitty little trick would work so that's what i did uh but before and it did work but before that before that little um uh, that little trick in playing it 
I discovered there was a uh, a tweet with a phone number attached to it, sent out by the folks who run the Borderlands account. Now, Gear, uh, Gear Erickson 2K usually have their own accounts on Twitter, and some of the games like um, like Borderlands has um, even though they'll change their name to like Borderlands 2 or board, like right now to Borderlands 3, uh, but they their main handle is Borderlands. It's the the game's uh, Twitter account. And part of the promotion showing videos, you know, sharing video clips, they shared out a number, a promotional number, um, with or what seemed to be a joke number. And I figured I got to give it a call. I got, you know, for you guys at home, I got to give this number a call to see if it's a real number, if it's a promotional number, or is it going to some John Jane Doe's um, home number, or is it going to, you know, uh, Joey's Pizzeria in some uh, San, uh, California town or something like that? Uh, I had to find out. I had to find out. So I fired up Skype. I fired up the recording software. I told Audacity to record what Skype was giving me. And I got the following promo message. So here is that call, ladies and gentlemen. Hello! What is up, my minions of mayhem? God Queen Tyrene here, and you've reached the COV-1-800 line for direct worship. If you're hearing this, you're already one of my most loyal followers, but I wanted to personally thank you for being part of our beautiful wave of screaming righteousness that's crashing over the galaxy. This is the age of the children of the vault, and there's no one I'd rather have dying for me than you. Hello. Now I already know you love me, but if you want to get the chance to tell me yourself why I'm the brightest star in your sky, please leave a message after the beep. And that's pretty much where the call and I hope you enjoyed it. I thought I hope you kind of got a fun kick out of that promotional call. It turned out yes, uh, my first in, intention, uh, first sus suspicions were correct. It was a promotional number that you can call and enjoy. Uh, and I enjoy sharing the stuff for with all of you out there. And I do apologize for the quality of the call and the recording because uh, we got a Windows update shoved down our throat uh, and the primary it wasn't just like hey we're just adding a, a few uh, security things uh, for Windows and there you go no 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 the big change this big update being shoved down my throat for my Windows machine was oh if you want to change it from a regular Windows theme theme to a dark theme you can now do that and because we we gave you this update, say goodbye to all your settings that you worked hard to do and everything else. That's right. I had to spend a better part of an hour making sure I was able to record Skype calls again. And it's still not as perfect as it was prior to the stinking update. Thank you so much, Windows. Or should I say, screw you, Microsoft. Because I hate these updates. I really hate them. It, it just makes me pull out what little hair I have left on the top of my head and shave my beard off right here, right now, due to the frustration. But that's beside the point. Let's continue on with the talking to talk about Borderlands. Well, as I said... Borderlands was dropped on officially on the 13th. We got a chance to uh, play it maybe a few hours earlier than those with uh, a CD, or I should say the game disc. Why uh, this thing was uh, allowed, uh, pretty much uh, what I was told, um, 
if you had a digital copy, you had to wait until midnight, officially on the 13th. But if you picked up a disc anywhere out there, and whether it was pre-order or not, you were able to play it at 9 p.m. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? Everybody else was able to play it. Uh, those who got a physical disc had early uh, early access. Yes, I'm making air quotes for an audio podcast. And But us folks that got it digitally or through the Epic Play Store, well... You get to play it at midnight like everybody else. Well, that that kind of ruined it, but thanks to a friend of mine, and as stated, I got to play it earlier than the folks with the uh, CD, the the game desk. So that was great. So I got to explore things. I'm not um, too uh, far into the game, but what has been released with other reviewers is that uh, they talk about bugs they talk about end game content and so forth and so so on but you don't want to hear about their experience you want to hear what i had to um experience with this game did i experience anything that some of these review sites had to say yes sadly i did um meaning that um some of the uh, uh things that was reported was uh, game glitches, um, they weren't so much broken, um, breaking the game or anything like that. Uh, one did, in essence, um, mess up the game and set me back maybe about five minutes, but it wasn't as bad. But one of the main factors is that uh, people have been saying, like, Kotaku, PC Gamer, it's more about the same, it's more about the same Borderlands. But here, here's the factor. Um, is it the same type of Borderlands? Yes. You can't, with a series like this, you can't make too many changes. You have to improve a few things, You ha- but you can't go too far to the aspect of that the diehard fans that are ones that are going buying this are going to uh, be... Uh, walking away saying, hey, we don't like this. You know, this is not what we expected. Is it the same type of boiling? Yeah, you're getting the same type of humor. Um, yeah, the, the, the main bad guys in this are, um, bad guys. I'm, I'm trying to keep this PG-13, uh, a little bit. I'm not trying to keep up the, the aspect of it, but, um, they're they're not as much of a butthead or uh, uh, much of a douchebag like uh, yeah I'll say it they they're not as much as a, a douchebag uh, as uh, handsome Jack was but uh, they they have their own aspect of uh, using m- more of a modern culture references that people would get i.e. YouTube streamers um, because a lot of the gamers can. Uh, uh, relate to the YouTube aspect. They know about YouTube. So that's what they get uh, focused around. And they did work in a lot of the characters from uh, Tales of the Borderlands uh, and the uh, sequel. I think the prequel. Uh, I don't know about the prequel, but um, I am not that far into the game. But they are a lot of, from what I've heard, there are Easter eggs and a lot of stuff that. Uh, Borderlands is known for. Uh, how does it compare to the reigning king of uh, looter shooters, Destiny? Um, I have yet to see. A, it, I said to say it doesn't. It does improve a lot of what Destiny has, um, meaning that the weapons, charms, and skins from right here can be used over and over again. You could customize. Um, your outfit, you, um, the aspect of uh, you get different weapon outfits. They're not one-time use only. Your character is full, in essence, uh, fully customizable. Meaning that once you get a new outfit, you could change the colors. You could change those colors um, every single time. You change your outfit, you could change the colors. You're not losing that color palette. 
and or you're not using that head if you want to switch heads that's fine uh, in destiny if you get a new color palette and you apply it to a, a weapon uh, I'm not sure about the weapon skins in regards to this from what I've been hearing you're um, you're able to uh, if you get a new gun you're able to switch it to the weapon skin uh, that you had for the old gun uh, I have yet to try that uh, as soon as I do I'll keep you all uh, updated uh, in regards to it but um, a lot of the stuff is better for the um, uh, overall even though uh, getting to uh, uh, like going from one planet to another uh, using the um, transfer stations the it's a little bit complicated uh, even uh, a couple of folks that that, was, that I was playing with had some confusion on over to uh, uh, try to uh, select something in regards to going to a new location. I mean, instead of in like Borderlands 2, if you wanted to go from one location to the next, uh, you had to, all you had to do was click uh, or press a button. Now you have to uh, press and hold that button to transfer that. Uh, some of the side missions do not come up right away when uh, you choose them like there's one side mission I chose uh, or picked up from Moxie and it told me to go to one planet I went there and there was no marker saying go here to uh, get to this section or to discover this section I, I had to in essence wander around for 10-15 minutes to uh, in essence find it and find the section to go there and start that uh, uh, that side mission so there are some things that have to be worked out um, there are some uh, glitches that that are there meaning that um, there is uh, when I went you're able to let me put it like this when it comes to the rides uh, your um, uh, vehicles in game to travel one to one section to another uh, they they held a borderland style which means they're armed to the teeth and it's what I enjoy about borderlands it's what I hate about destiny you're on uh, on, on in destiny you're on this kind of um, a hover bike and you go through from one section to another and you could be uh, attacked by enemies but in order to fight back these enemies you have to get off that hover bike and then attack uh, but in Borderlands you have the ability to attack while still in that vehicle so that's also a plus the new thing in this um, vehicle they don't give you ve vehicle skins like in Borderlands 2 or the prequel um, you have to if you see an enemy in a vehicle that has a different skin or different wheels or different weapons you have the ability to hijack that vehicle and take it to one of the uh, places where you would spawn a vehicle and as soon as you take it there that vehicle once registered in that uh, section is now available to you so it's a very interesting concept it's a new concept but in this is where I uh, found one of the bugs that pretty much kicked me out of the game. It froze the game and it kicked me out. Um, another thing that was happening with me is that uh, I'd be playing co-op with a friend of mine and in his game it would lag. Uh, like there was connection error. Literally like there was a, a lag and um, but eventually it'll work itself out but there was a lag. But the plus thing is when he was like a level, like a level seven, and I was like eleven, a level eleven, uh, the enemies that w I was fighting were a level eleven they, or a level twelve. So which means um, there was a chance I, I was still earning decent XP in his game, which which is a uh, a great thing because um, one of the issues that I had with. Um, like Borderlands 2, when my buddy was playing, would be playing, 
a lower level character and I was a high level character, uh, I wouldn't be getting any XP while he was getting XP. Uh, I don't know how this re could relate if I was maybe a level 50 or a level 40 and he was a level 7. Uh, but um, we'll have to see how that happens down the, lo down the road. Um, as for the end game content, there is... Uh, what's called mayhem mode that's maybe kind of like the overpower modes that we've seen in borderlands 2 uh but a, overall a lot of things seem bigger uh more expanded going from planet to planet is better in borderlands than in um uh destiny because in destiny you have a kind of a loading screen to go into orbit you wait a minute or two you have another uh, loading screen uh, before you go to uh, the planet you're destined, you're supposed to go to, and you stay there for maybe another minute or two before you quote unquote land and start your mission. This is just all right. We're just going to put you right here, and we you can start that mission on the planet. And going to that planet, if you're there for the planet for the first time, uh, good chance you'll be on. Uh, in Sanctuary 3, I'm not spoiling anything, and you'll get a drop ship going to that planet, and as soon as you drop, get in that drop ship, you have access to that planet, which is cool, which is cool, uh, totally cool, uh, a lot of the stuff that's there, there's a lot of stuff that's hidden, uh, there's a lot of uh, additional stuff, um, but so far I'm enjoying it, but there, there doesn't seem too much additional content. But then again, I'm always starting out. Uh, there's a lot of side areas I have to explore. Uh, another great thing that uh, I guess 2K or Gearbox listened to uh, in regards to the players is that the issue that a lot of people brought up with uh, Borderlands 2 is that when you got a kind of like an echo recording, you couldn't hear what was on that recording because there would be gunfire um, or anything like that. You couldn't hear uh, what was on that recording. But what they implemented now is that when you pick up an echo recording, you can, if you don't, if you're unable to hear it, you could listen to it later, like if you're in Sanctuary, and just get caught up that way. So that's great. Um, there are... you. Some like we were, I was fearing that there would be, um, uh, kind of like uh, loot box, not loot boxes, microtransactions. I haven't seen those yet, um, but uh, for the most part, you are able to earn iridium, um, easily enough, even though slowly. But um, I will say this: the many people that are so used to Destiny and Destiny 2 are saying, well, the strikes are better in regards to endgame stuff than with Borderlands. Yeah, granted, uh, with Borderlands, you could just go straight to a loot box, and a uh, loot boss, not box, and continue. And just go there and do everything. And you're getting great loot. You, you can earn continued loot throughout the time you get that or work that loot boss uh with the strikes on destiny in order to get anything anything loot wise you, you you didn't get any real loot from a strike in destiny 2 honestly you'd get maybe if you were lucky there were times i played strikes on destiny and destiny 2 i didn't rec there was no loot that dropped from that boss none whatsoever in the field no loot that dropped you can earn a uh, loot through a, a random number generator at the end like hey you got 15 kills you died six times so and you did seven assists so therefore and so forth and so on you could earn a weapon or a uh, shader or uh, what have you a piece of armor or something along those lines with loot bosses you get loot you legitimately get loot and with stri the strikes in destiny 2 you'd give be given a kind of a uh, uh, a like a 
a little bit of a, like a reward crystal, let's call it. And you turn in 10 crystals to get a mysterious thing you could turn in. And it could be the highest color mystery sphere. You turn that mystery sphere in and it's a piece of crap. Either armor or gun or something that you do not need. Again, with the the loot bosses, I'm not sure what kind of loot boss, bosses we have in Borderlands 3 yet. I'm keeping my eye out on the popular Borderlands YouTubers in regards to um, the who's, the what's, when's, and where's. But uh, the, in regards to the loot bosses, but there are a lot of sections that you can uh, fall, what they call farm and uh, for loot and your iridium and cash and everything is plentiful, unlike in Destiny. Um, one of the things with the the uh, machines, the the vending machines in Borderlands Three, you can you don't have to if you don't know which ammo you have the you could just hit like the Y button on the Xbox one of uh, the Xbox one the Y button and your ammo gets refilled and yes there's the cost but it gets refilled that's wonderful that's great you could skip the the um, going through the vending machine right then and there that's great uh, you could easily buy um, the backpack upgrades the weapon um, uh, ammo count upgrades for cash um, easily and the cash is easily found throughout the game you don't have to like grind too much for it um, there there's you have the what they call in essence the golden chest or the diamond chest keys are easily gotten through Twitter and everything else and um, through the VIP program on uh, for Borderlands, which is completely for free, you can earn extra uh, skins, uh, like outfits for your character, uh, extra uh, character heads, all, all for free, just by watching like YouTube videos and reading articles on their website, or signing up for their email and edit, uh, edit, uh, entering a code. That simple. That simple. And. You tell uh, the VIP program, hey, I want five keys. Guess what? You're getting five keys. And for the most part, you're also getting like the weapons as well. Uh, they have some weapons you can get for like 4,000 credits. Um, gun shaders. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that they're giving away it for free. All you have to do is take a little bit of your time out. It doesn't cost anything. And to kind of as I move on to the game, once I finish the game, I'll let you all know a more detailed and a full round more um, with it if the problem, problems persist. Yes, I understand that there's a lot of controversy over the game, but I'm enjoying myself with it. Uh, and uh, one side note is the fact that uh, apparently later in the game, this is something that Destiny does not have, but uh, apparently because Borderlands embraces fun, they have a gun in Borderlands that shoots guns. Uh, that's right. They have a bo gun that shoots guns. And the cost, uh, obviously, it, from what I hear in regards to this, uh, the special kind of currency in Borderlands is iridium. And the, uh, it costs 10 iridium to shoot this gun each time. So if you have a lot of iridium, you could you know, and you have somebody that you're playing with that's a low-level character, and you have this gun, it helps them out. Um, plus, there's guns in Borderlands that doesn't use ammo. It uses cash that you find or earn through missions and so forth and so on. How f weird is that? So, that being said, let's skip out the review. And like I said, I'm currently playing it. I'm streaming more so on Facebook. So if you want to watch me stream Borderlands 3, head to our Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com forward slash the Long Coat Mafia podcast. And you'll be able to see the, the streams that we've done there. And hopefully, because again, we have more following on Facebook, you can watch us live stream, at least watch me live stream Borderlands 3. Um, and to move on, before we get into um, the aspect of uh, our final review, um, you heard us at one point talk about the uh, the raid on Area 51, if it's a good idea or a bad idea. Um, 
I have to look into the story a little bit more, but um, it they they kind of canceled it. Uh, but hopefully next week uh, it's the uh, 20th when it's supposed to happen. But I've heard it's overly canceled. There was supposed to be kind of like a music festival slash conference there. That's been canceled. I've also heard that a couple of YouTubers tried to storm Area 51. They got arrested. So uh, I'm going to be working on that over the next week or so to bring you better information in regards to um, uh, everything to what happened, what the deal was. Hopefully I could find the link in regards to it and at least share it on our, our Facebook page. Uh, if not, copy uh, the article to uh, an email and send it myself so I'm able to read it and uh, then tell you guys and gals my thoughts on it. But overall, it's um, it's been canceled. Everything's been canceled. Uh, but that if you still want to go to Area 51 and see the weirdness be a part of the weirdness that is that area i'm not stopping you heck uh if i had the funds and the time to go i'd go to area where the area 51 is in rachel nevada and see the weirdness and just take in the um because it's kind of a cultural thing uh america thing and a cultural thing um and a pop culture thing in a way i'd even go to uh, uh that aspect of america just to say I've been there, and just for fits and giggles, um, but the last thing I kind of want to, well, um, Mike almost fell over, um, but the last thing I kind of want to cover before we kind of head on off for the evening, and that is to talk about um, uh, the whole uh, Dark Crystal series, and oh my god, oh my god, uh, it's so good, folks, if you haven't if you don't have Netflix, pick up Netflix and watch the Dark Crystal series. It's so awesome. It's everything I was expecting it to be. Um, I, Henson Productions did not disappoint me in any way, shape, or form. That's right. They did not disappoint me because uh, they... They took, I, like I said before, when we were kind of talking about it, when we heard the news, um, that I was hoping that they t took what they learned from Farscape and kind of applied it to the dark, this um, the series. That way, they could better enhance uh, the series. And it turns just that happened. They they took what they learned from Farscape and applied it to uh, the Dark Crystal, uh, meaning. Uh, not only did they they took what they learned, they expanded on the, what they learned and did it well, which means they were able to show more whatever um, Jim Henson could not do or could not show in the original Dark Crystal movie. They were able to do in this. They were able to expand more with the uh, how each of the characters moved, and it didn't feel. Granted, the original movie felt like a great fantasy story. You felt that there was uh, a history there and a world there. It was a great fan. No, don't, don't get me wrong. I love the original ser the original movie. It's there, um, and it's a great work of art if you want to call it that, and a great movie. It's a cult classic. Um, Henson, uh, Jim Henson did a great job with it, and with this series, they took um, a an area and made a world they didn't just make a world they made a universe literally that's what it felt um it just didn't feel when you watch the original movie this little thing uh that had a legends behind it had a story behind it uh it felt widely expanded on and i think there were mi minor retcons from the, they did retcon a few things and changed a few things in regards to the movie but not too much, not too much, but everything else, like the CGI that they used for it, um, felt like it had weight, uh, if you, some of you out there understand that, because sometimes when you see uh, CGI in a movie, uh, the CGI doesn't add weight to the character or weight in the particular world, um, in this it had weight, the um, CGI, the characters and the environments had weight, and they used the CGI to add, 
add little detail uh, or to do things that they couldn't do with puppetry. And you got to figure this is this thing was done with mostly practical effects, not have, relying heavily on CG. It was done wonderfully. They expanded on the story. They incorporated what was kind of told in the original movie into this. They incorporated a little bit, kind of hinted at it. And um, it's kind of hard to place the timeline of how far back the, uh, this prequel is from the movie. But I'm hoping I want to see a second season. I w Please, Netflix, I know we're a small uh, podcast. I want to see a second season with this. I, I so much. There's so much to go into and explore. I know it's probably an expensive uh, initial setup. But they have everything right now. I want to see a second season. Um, I would love to hear see what happens next. I'd probably be very very interested to see what happens next. Please, let's continue it. Um, especially with the, the 10 episode, uh, uh, I think it was like a 10 episode ser for this series. Um, they did do that. They turned what was a short story into a novella. novella. Um, I think they might have also learned something from, I don't think they took any hints from Robert Rodriguez with uh, his uh, Dusk Till Dawn series because he... Um, if anything, they probably did. I got to look at the behind the scenes for it. But you have to understand this. With um, the Dusk to Dawn series, Robert Rodriguez uh, took a two-hour movie and made a series out of it. it stretched, uh, in essence, a short story into a novella. And then took that novella and made it into a novel. And I think he did a good job with uh, the Dusk to Dawn series. But um, I think the final series didn't season of that didn't really fit too well but uh i like overall as a whole it, it did very uh it worked and i think uh, henson kind of or henson productions was able to do that with the dark crystal and make a short story into a novella let's see if they take this novella and make it into a novel uh and hopefully it doesn't go downhill but what i did find um uh, a problem with in regards to this um, the series is that a lot of the uh, puppetry instead of the when the like the Gelflings talked or the pod people talked um, instead of the lower jaw moving downward to uh, help with the speech they tended to look more like a Henson Muppet than a Henson puppet um and i use that what i mean by a henson muppet is like a uh fozzy bear or kermit the frog or um a cookie monster um meaning that the top of the head is what's going up and down not so much the lower jaw um and that's what i saw happen at times in uh the series the the series is that they tended to act more like a henson muppet than a henson puppet and instead of just using the lower jar and being more realistic uh, it, that was my only only gripe with this and if that's my only gripe uh with it uh, then so be it and there was one other little fa factoid that um i found out later that i did not realize and it kindly surprised me is that one of the folks that helped design and build some of the the puppets in this series was the the baby in um labyrinth that's right the little baby in labyrinth grew all up and worked on dark crystal um the series so that that's a wonderful weird little tidbit um that he grew up to be still be part of the quote-unquote henson family in a way so um i love this series there, there have been a few people that uh uh say that this uh 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 it was dark, dark as the original movie, if not darker. Um, I want to get Big Candy's thoughts on it next time he's on. But hopefully by the time we do our next episode, uh, it's going to be 
I'm going to see if I could get him on for the 20th to talk about a few things and get his thoughts on other things. And hopefully earlier that Saturday, um, I'll be able to see if, uh, Stephen King's It, uh, Chapter 2, or the new Rambo movie. So uh, one of the two I'll probably watch, and I'll give you guys a review on that. Um, I know there's a lot of hoopla uh, surrounding the, the movie, the sequel, It Chapter 2, but um, that might be something to talk about next week. I don't know. Uh, a lot of things happening over the next week or two. Um, I'm not so sure what exactly is going to go down next week. We'll, we'll see. But uh, either way, we'll... Um, We'll hit that bridge or cross that bridge when we come to it. I just wanted to give you a few reviews, share our uh, interview that we got from the craft fair today, and uh, share our initial thoughts of Gears of War 5, Borderlands 3, and uh, our, a brief little review and discussion, What even though it's one way, from um, Dark Crystal um, prequel series on Netflix. There's probably other things that I want to talk about. Um, I'll bring them up to Big Candy next time to see if he's willing to discuss them. So, um, take care. I am out. Uh, I'll see you guys, hopefully, while I am streaming Borderlands 3 on our Facebook. So, um, that being said, our Facebook page, once again, is The Long Coat... Uh, I'm sorry. It's facebook.com forward slash the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. Uh, our Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv forward slash The Long Coat Mafia Pod. Our Mixer channel is mixer.com forward slash LCMP. And those letters are in capital to, for if you wish to know. Our Twitter handle is Long Coat Mafia. Our Instagram uh, handle is also Long Coat Mafia. Uh, but if you want to join in the conversation uh, or hear us talk about something, you know, feel free to leave us a message on Facebook uh, or send us an email, which is longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Um, but if you want to listen to any of our past episodes other than this one and hear better reviews, better interviews and con coverage and show coverage, you can do so by, um, if you're on the go, heading over to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, or if you don't prefer those uh, platforms, you you can easily find us on Spotify, Stitch Radio, uh, the Podbean app, um, which will, I think, allow you to go back all the way to the beginning of our show, which is awesome. We have a lot of interviews and stuff that you could t uh, look at and listen to. Um, uh, we do have a... Um, but if you're on your desktop... Um, you can hear us on iTunes or whatever, uh, if you're on the Mac OS, uh, as your desktop computer or laptop, uh, I don't know what they're calling iTunes on the, uh, Macintosh side of things, but, um, on, at least on the PC side, you can hear us on iTunes, um, you can hear us on Spotify, Stitcher Radio, uh, and our website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. You could stream our episodes on the website, uh, or you could download them and listen to them on your player of choice, whatever that might be, or your MP3 player of choice. So, um, what else? Our YouTube page, before I forget telling you all about that. Just head on over to YouTube, search The Long Coat Mafia Podcast, and hopefully it'll come up. It is should be the only channel that comes up uh, in regards to it. Uh, we do a lot. Our, you can listen to our, our um, episodes on YouTube, or you can see a lot of our uh, videos, our walkthroughs that we have done, providing that nobody has copyright claimed them and forced us to take down these videos. But either way, uh, you'll be able to see our um, videos on YouTube. Uh, so feel free to uh, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, hit that like button. And you can always join in the conversation um, by adding a comment down below the videos. Or you can add a comment down on the pin post of that particular episode or the post of that particular episode that linked you to uh, uh, that particular episode. Meaning if you uh, found us through Facebook, just go back to that uh, pin post, 
for this episode. And I'll leave a comment or leave us a message, your choice. Um, what else? That should be about it. Uh, take care, folks. I know I haven't been saying this is going to be a short episode because every time I see that, it's like an hour and a half, two hours. But because I don't see that anymore, it's closer to an hour and 15. So take care. I'm out, folks. Have a great evening. And for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to watch the end of... Um, Clash of Champions on the WWE app, and which I, thanks to a fan, I get to enjoy every now and again. And probably after this Clash of Champions is over, before we post up this episode, we'll probably be playing Borderlands 3 some more and uh, trying to forward the story some more and see what's going on. So take care. I'm out. Hope you all have a good week. Stay tuned to our so social media platforms for your social media and enjoy your day. Uh, head on over to our social media and see what we're posting up and join in the conversation. So take care. I am out. You've been listening to the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, the Internet's most hated and mafia-themed geek podcast. 